Hey church, I hope you're doing well. If you happened to join us last week at the start of the conversation, you know we talked about something that I don't always talk about, that is bowling. This week, I figured I would talk about a related topic. What topic that might be, you may ask? Well, it should come as no surprise. The topic before us is Willie Nelson. That's right, Willie Nelson and bowling hand in hand. Fist in glove, however you want to say it. Peanut butter and jelly. Connected, well, not very well at all. If you look up Willie Nelson and bowling together on Google, you find out that when he turned 90, he did a performance at the Hollywood Bowl. But he's not really known as a bowler. I don't know if he's ever bowled. I'm guessing he has, but there's not really a connection. I'm just using that to segue into Willie Nelson for today. And why Willie Nelson? Well, first, it's not because of his character. I, I don't believe that he models what it means to follow Jesus and, and is somebody that we should copy in terms of his character. It's not even because of his music. He's He's been all over the place in his musical style. There's, there's songs that I've listened to and enjoyed. I'm familiar with the red-headed stranger, all of these things. But it's not really to promote him or his music, per se. Instead, I wanted to talk about Willie Nelson because I want to talk about his guitar. Maybe you have heard of it. He purchased it a while back in 1969 when he was still relatively unknown. A Martin N20 classical guitar. Nylon strings. No electronics within it. And Willie Nelson, as a aspiring country music singer, fell in love with this particular guitar, but he made some slight changes to it. He, he had some electronic pickups put in uh, so that you can plug it in and, and be amplified, and he played the guitar with a, a pick instead of his fingers. Usually nylon string guitars, you play with your fingers, they're more geared towards classical music, flamenco or something like that. Willie thought, nah, I wanna play my country music with this, I'll use a pick, I'll put some electronics in there, and off we go. The guitar has been with him ever since. He actually named it, and, and he refers to it as Trigger. Willie Nelson's guitar, Trigger. It's pretty famous if you've heard of it. But as you can imagine, when if he started playing in 1969, and it says that he's done some 10,000 plus shows with it, not just songs, but 10,000 plus concerts with this guitar, as you can imagine that over the years, the guitar showed some signs of wear. It shows some signs of use. Still, it is Willie's guitar. It's his main squeeze, his, his main axe, the one that he goes to beyond any others. He's played some other ones here and there a little bit, but that is his true love, at least in terms of guitar, maybe even in terms of life. As he's played it, things have happened. The, the wood has deteriorated from him using the pick. There's a big giant hole in it that has had to been repaired and shored up different times. He's also been in the habit of having people sign it and scratch their names into it. So other popular musical artists and football players and all kinds of people have put their signatures on it. And some of those have worn down from him playing. And just life in general has happened to this guitar. So it looks nothing like it did when it started. Well, you know, it looks like a deteriorated form of it did when it started. But it's Willie's guitar. He, he is attached to it. He actually said that if he didn't have that guitar, he would no longer be in music. And part of me thinks, wow, you know, that's a little, that's a little something. And it thinks, I, I'm not sure. I mean, you could play another one, Willie. It's just a guitar. But then another part of me thinks, man, I, I get it. It's admirable. I respect the fact that he could play any guitar in the world, any one that he wanted, and that he is well off and, and musical companies would be happy to have him play their instrument. He could get anything he wanted and yet he still chooses this old guitar from 1969 that has been with him for the majority of his career and a lot, long part of his life. There's something to that commitment into the love that he 
shows to that guitar and to the loyalty he expresses. And even myself, I, I get it. You know, I, I have a guitar that I've played for 20 some years and it's my guitar. I don't really want another one. I can't afford to buy any old guitar that I would ever dream of, but, but that one's mine. It has personal value and meaning to it. I remember the songs that I've sung using that guitar, the, the places that it's been, the, the worship that has taken place while using it. And yes, it has some dings and some nicks and some signs of use, not like trigger, but it has some. Still, it's personal to me. There's a fondness of loyalty to that. And that's what we're going to be looking at today, this idea of love and loyalty and what Jesus has to say about it. Not so much about guitars, because really they're, they're wood and metal and they're just objects that will deteriorate and pass away, but about more serious commitments than that. Before we get there, let's just do a rehash of where we are in, in this season of Lent. We're looking at sayings of Jesus that are challenging, that make us go, Jesus said, what? And kind of pause to reflect on our own discipleship. So when Jesus says things like, we better count the cost, that we need to, to hate others in comparison to him, Jesus says, what? How does that affect my discipleship? That the last will be first, the first will be last. How does that impact my discipleship? That we must be perfect, therefore, as our Heavenly Father is perfect. What does that mean for us as we follow Jesus? Today we're looking at another one of those passages, and this section talk, speaks about loyalty and commitment and love and applies to our life in a, in a deeper way even than Willie's love and loyalty and compassion towards, towards Trigger. Our scripture today, it hangs around the same vicinity that we were in last week. We're actually backing up a, a few verses. We're within the Sermon on the Mount found in the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 5. And we'll start today in, in verse 27 and read on through verse 30. Matthew 5, verse 12, 27. You have heard that it was said, do not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Just so we're clear, this can go vice versa. You know, it's just, it's not just aimed at, at the men in the room and towards their spouses. We can go the other way with that as well. You've heard it said, do, do not commit adultery. I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Jesus said what? That if, if you look at a woman or a man in, you know, roles reversed here, lustfully, that you've already committed adultery with her in your heart, and that that is a problem in the eyes of God. You see, he doesn't negate the physical problem of this scenario. He said, if you commit adultery, that is bad. It's a, against the Ten Commandments. It's, it's not how one should live or be loyal to their spouse in terms of Scripture and the ideals for marriage. If you commit adultery, that is a problem. But that's not the root or the cause of the problem, Jesus said. No, if you look lustfully at, at one, then you've committed it in your heart, adultery in your heart. Jesus indicates here that, that the physical, the external, the behaviors that we engage in, though they are a problem, they're not the root. They're not the cause. They're not the deep-seated issue. And I think he brings this up because we, have, as people, some of us at least, have a tendency to see how far we can get close to the edge. To see how close to the edge we can get before we might tip over. Well, Jesus, how do you define adultery? I, I, I mean, if I do this, does that count? What about this? Does that count? Where, where is that line? Lord, what physical behaviors can I get away with? Is a relationship over the phone okay? 
Uh, I mean, is it only if we go out to dinner or maybe if we go beyond dinner? Where, where is that physical line, Jesus? Jesus does away with all of that. He said, forget the physical line. The physical line is, is an issue and it's a problem, but the real issue and the real problem, the one lying behind that physical line is the issue of what goes on in here. So if you're doing that in here already, you're already in trouble. You've already crossed the line. You've already gone beyond which I have asked you to go. The root of the problem is what happens in the heart. The physical uh, things that take place are an issue as well, but they're, they're the result of what's going on inside. And this isn't the first time that Jesus says something like this in this portion of scripture. In fact, backing up a little earlier to verse 21, we hear this. You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not murder. And anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. Jesus said, you've heard that. And he's not saying you've heard that as if this isn't true, because both of these things come from the, the Ten Commandments. The, the do not commit adultery, that's in there. The do not commit murder. Yep, Old Testament in the scriptures. You've heard that it's said. So Jesus isn't negating that. He's adding on to it. He's increasing the stakes. He, he's saying, he's upping the ante and saying, no, there, there's even more. You've heard it said to the people long ago, do not murder and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. I tell you, anyone who is angry with his brother or sister will be subject to judgment. It's not just the murder that's the problem. If you're harboring those angry thoughts towards your sister or your brother, that's the problem. And you'll be subject to judgment there, as well as if you go and commit it. You see, he recognizes that the heart leads us into all kinds of things, and that the heart is at the root of the issue. A lot of times when we're angry or we, we go into that behavior of committing murder, and I at least am thinking that this is how it happens, that a lot of times it's premeditated. You have thought about how you will react, what you will do. If you ever catch the thus, thus and so that has done whatever they have done, you will do this and you harbor that anger and that resentment and that plan and that idea and that way of, of choosing to act out within here. And that causes us to be subject to judgment already. Now, this isn't to say, well, if I'm already subject to judgment, I may as well go and do it because I'm getting judged anyway. No, no, no. Jesus wants us to be perfect, to follow after him. This is... Uh, possibly within that context that comes just a little bit later, be perfect therefore as your Father in heaven is perfect. Jesus wants us to not just deal with the physical problems, but to deal with the ones in here as well. And so then Jesus continues into this pattern of, well, Jesus <laughs> said, what exactly? Uh, when we move back to this issue of the heart and loyalty in this context to our spouse, but also we would consider this as loyalty to God as well. He says, if, if you look at one a woman lustfully, they've already committed adultery with her in his heart. Then he gives a prescription. If your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out, throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than your whole body to go into hell. That's the prescription that Jesus gives. And my initial reaction is, yeah, sort of, I get it. But you said what? I mean, I, I get it, Jesus, if, if somehow my right eye and just my right eye, not my left eye, but if my right eye was really causing me the problem and leading me into sin, then pluck that sucker out, throw it in the trash. It'd be better to be faithful to you and, and wind up in eternity in your kingdom than to be cast away from your presence. Right hand 
causing the problem. I can see that sort of too, but this brings up these pictures of, you know, that movie Aladdin and the poor little street urchin running through the streets and somebody wanting to chop his hands off because he stole some bread. And is that really what Jesus is prescribing here? Well, let's just consider, where has Jesus identified the problem? What is really the, the root of the issue? Is it our eyes? Is it our hands? No. Jesus said, problems in, in the inside. What goes on in, in here, in the heart? And we realize pretty quickly, well, we can't remove that. We can't fix that. We can change that. But it needs to be changed. The, the, if the heart is the root, if the heart is the cause, if the heart is what leads us into these issues and into these problems, then the heart is what is need to be changed. And the one that can change the heart, can remove the heart, is the Lord. Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 19 makes this promise. God says, I will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them. I will remove from them their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. God says he will remove our hearts of stone, our hearts that are callous toward him, our hearts that, that don't love properly, our hearts that are unloyal, our, our hearts that lead us towards things like unrighteous anger, our hearts that, that are lustful. God says he'll remove those hearts of stone from us, cut them out, and will replace them with hearts of flesh that love God, that are loyal to God, that serve God, that worship God, and that express that loyalty in our marital relationships and in our other relationships as well. The root of the problem isn't all that stuff that we do out here. Those are issues and they need handled and dealt with. But even beyond that, what goes on in here is what needs to be cleansed and resolved. And that takes an act of the Lord. And to have that happen, we ask Jesus, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, God. Restore in me. Give me that heart of flesh for that heart of stone. We recognize that our hearts have been unfaithful, that our lives have been deceitful, that we have gone wrong paths, and then we ask Jesus to forgive us, to cleanse us, and to put within us a new heart. Now, before I tie this all up, I, I, I feel the need to, to say that, that not every thought that passes through, not every idea that streams through the brain, not everything that we might ever think is necessarily lustful or necessarily a, a problem. It's the ones that, that, you know, take root. If birds are flying by, you let them fly on by. You, you don't let them build a nest in there. We need to deal with the ones that are building a nest. And, and let me give you an example by returning back to Willie before we're gone. Let's just say, I have my Takamini, my 20-year guitar, and, and let's just say God has said, one guitar for you, and that's it. You, you have the guitar, that's your blessing, and, and stay in that lane, no other guitars. He doesn't really say that, but you, you see what I'm going here. God has said, one guitar for you, but I see trigger. I can notice, hey, Willie makes that guitar sound nice. I can notice, hey, that guitar has produced some awesome songs over the years. Those things are okay. That, that's not leading me into a lustful or, or problematic situation. But if I start to dwell on that and I think, yeah, that guitar really is better than mine. It's way cooler signatures than mine had. It's traveled the world in way, places that mine has never done. It's sounded and been recorded in ways that mine has never been or will never be, I really would rather have that guitar than this one that I have. I really want that guitar more than I want 
this guitar and we begin to focus and highlight it and desire that guitar more than what we have or what we maybe even don't have yet if we long for that then we've we're moving into that area or we're, we're being lustful about it where we're creating an adulterous situation about it if that were the case for guitars and then if we went even further and thought you know I know how to get that guitar. I just need to show up at one of Lily's shows. He has a little accident on stage. I happen to be in the right place at the right time to catch his guitar and swiftly escort it off stage in safety in its case into the back of my trunk. And if that accident helps to happens to be, you know, organized by me and the timing is organized by me so that I acquire the guitar and Lily no longer has trigger, that's problematic as well. We, we've moved into that area where, where we're angry maybe with Lily and we're coveting what Lily has and we're lustfully seeking after something that rightfully belongs to someone else. That's where it gets into the issue. It's not, hey, Willie has a nice guitar. So happy for him. That's not a problem. That's the bird passing by, noticing that, that Willie is, is blessed with a, an instrument that he loves. But when they build the nest and start to root and take, take root in the heart, that's where problems lie and where we need to rectify. And so we, we go forth in freedom, in faith. We go forth seeking the Lord with our whole heart, with all of our mind, soul, heart, strength, understanding. We, we worship God and we ask God to create within us a clean heart because that's where the problem lies. Jesus said, you know, if your, your eye is causing you an issue, you'd be better to poke it off. If your hand's causing you to stumble, you'd be better to cut it off. Unfortunately, it's our heart that needs the cleansing. Fortunately, Jesus has made a way to do just that. So friend, may you go and be loyal to the Lord. Be loyal to your relationships. Be loyal in your life and your responsibilities and the things that God has asked you to do. May you serve the Lord with gladness and faithfulness in the ex eternal physical things that you do but may you also do that within your heart for God sees what goes on in there and if we're having a problem if we're struggling in that area ask God to fulfill his word for you to create within you that clean heart so that you might worship him in spirit and in truth amen